Hello there. Today's video is going to be about setting up your own WordPress website. So I want you to go to wordpress.org and download the current version of WordPress. Um, and then I want you to go to FileZilla and download the FileZilla client. Now taking screenshots of the next steps, uh, hopefully you've uh, right clicked on the WordPress you downloaded and extract it all and you've run that files client to install it on your machine but uh... next you're going to go to whoever bought you bought your dot com from and you're going to find out how to modify your name servers now i used hostgator as my hosting provider and when i sign in to my dot com slash cpanel and scroll all the way to the bottom it will tell me right here what the names of my name servers are so you're gonna have to modify your name servers on your on the website where you bought your dot coms or dot nets or dot orgs or whatever and point them to these servers listed here uh, every hosting company is gonna have different name servers but uh, this is basically what points your name to the website that you're getting from your hosting company. Now, if you're lucky, you've got this little smiling guy right here, and you can use Fantastico, and it'll install WordPress for you and answer all of these questions and, and take care of a lot of things for you. But if you don't, then you're going to have to go through the whole process of doing it manually. So the first thing you need to do is you need to click on My SQL Databases and make a database at which point you type in this field here uh, the name of the database that you're going to use and make sure you write down all this information because it's going to come important later on I uh, blacked out this section because it's part of the database's name and I don't want you to see what my database names are uh, and then you need to put in a username here and a password for the databases and then click uh, create user down here at the bottom create user. Now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to select from here your database and your user select them both and click add which will take you to this screen which should give you all privileges so check all privileges and that'll check all these other boxes and then click make changes. So the next thing you have to do is you have to pull up FileZilla. Uh, you put in your host name right here you put in your username for your your website right here and you put in your password now by username I mean the username that you use to log into cPanel you're not a you're actually gonna have two passwords for your website so um, then you click quick connect the next thing is is gonna pull up a list of directories on your server find public HTML on this side this is the server side and this is, should show your desktop so you can just click on desktop if you can find it in the list um, basically wherever you unzip that WordPress folder to now look inside that WordPress and you should see a folder called WPA WP admin WP content WP includes you want all that stuff in that folder so just right click select all and uh, grab it and drag it over to here and you'll wind up with this little bar down here that says you got how many queued files how many successful files if you have any failed transfers you need to start the process all over again so right click on the files over here delete them and try it again it'll take a little while to do a few minutes depending on your internet connection until you get to the point when you pull up when it gets done you pull up your uh, your dot com or your dot net and you come to this page and you click create a configuration file now you need to know your database name your database username your database password where your database is usually that's just local host and a table prefix so click let's go so you put in your database name that you made in cPanel you put in the username that you made to administer to this database the password of uh, the user that's going to administer to this database the database host this is usually just local host 
Uh, I've seen some providers use different servers as their database. And then the uh, table prefix, usually that's just WP underscore. You can leave that default and click Submit. And then next up, click Run the Install if everything checks out. Now, the next question is your blog title and your email address. So put in what you want your website to be called and what you want your email address to be. The next screen is going to show you admin, which will be your login to the website, not to the cPanel, so you might want to write that down, and your temporary password. So make sure you write this one down because you'll never see it again. So whenever you click the login button, it's going to want to know that admin and password, the password it just gave you. So the next thing you can do is right here click take me to my profile page so you can change your password to something you're more likely to remember. Or you can come over here to users and just make a completely different user with a login and a password you're more likely to remember. And uh, at that point, you should have a uh, website that looks a lot like this. It's the basic WordPress website, and uh, it's not pretty, but there it is. And uh, it's a start. Uh, so hopefully you've learned on how to install WordPress on your website and you'll get to try it on your own and play with it. Remember the website where it's .com slash WP dash admin slash. That'll be an important website to remember. That'll always log you into the back end. You'll need to know your WordPress login and your WordPress password to be able to do so. Uh, keep your all your other passwords somewhere safe and secure. Thank you for watching.